Welcome back, everyone. This old sword is with you once again. And today we're going to give some love to off-grid knives. I find that uh, I've got five so far. Um, had a few more in the past. Uh, they came and they went. And uh, my interest is kind of risen and fallen with these knives alternately. But these are the five that I feel I do like and I can use and I want to talk a little bit about them and uh, just basically say that I feel off-grid offers something for everyone and uh, that's hard to say with a lot of knife companies uh, there are the knife companies that can fulfill that need but off-grid does it very very well first of all all off-grid knives as of this date are being manufactured by Best Tech so you're really looking at Best Tech knives with off-grid designs and the owner Kerry has put a lot of effort into these designs and a lot of thought. And there's a lot of fixed blades which I don't have along with the folders I'm going to show you. So let's get right into it. And the reason I have the boxes out, we're going to put the little Cayman aside for the time being, is to show you that one of the hallmarks here of uh, Best Tech, uh, Best Tech, <laughs> yeah all right, I did say that didn't I? Um, of off-grid is that each box is unique and has the name boldly printed on the top of the box for each knife. So we're going to quickly take those out and uh, give you kind of a uh, simulation of uh, unboxing. And uh, each knife fits perfectly in its little foam receptacle in the box. There are no pouches, only the boxes, and the boxes are very rigid and are have a magnetic flap. So you can store them in there if you so choose. But these knives are all users, so I would say you're probably going to want to have them in your pocket, not in the box like I do. So we're going to lay them out there for you and then get into a um, quick look at each one. All right. So I had the Cayman out first. So this is the original Cayman. There is now a Cayman XL. I got other large knives by Offgrid, so I uh, wasn't too interested in getting into the XL version of the Cayman because this fits so well. It is an extremely ergonomic rounded off handle with a palm swell. It just melts right into the hand and it is extremely secure. You've got a guard here that is um, comes to you by virtue of the flipper tab. A fairly high flipper tab with a little forward cant to it. And we've got a very aggressive uh, little bowie blade there. Very reminiscent of some of the older bowie blades. I'm not sure the name of those blades. Uh, I don't even want to mention a name and be wrong. So. At any rate, I take that as a Bowie clip. At this point in time, I've carried this a good amount. You can see there's some wear on the clip. So that's how they're going to wear the black clips. It's going to polish off just a little bit. And uh, it's been sharpened a few times. And right now, it's uh, got a pretty good working edge on it. Probably could stand to be touched up. It is in D, it is in D2. Very piercy, nice little EDC knife, basic construction, liners, and what one thing they do is give you flat screws, and the clip is inletted into the G10 handles in this case. I think there's only one version of this one aside from the XL. I don't think there are different handle colors in this one. If there are, uh, you can find off-grid knives in two different places. One is Amazon. They've got a pretty good store out on Amazon. Or you can order directly from the company. I'm going to give you both links. But a real handy little, about oh, a little over three inch, maybe three and a quarter-ish um, size knife. Each of these has its own review out on my channel, so you want to learn more, check out those reviews. 
Jimping is a bit on the smooth side, but does grab nicely. And I think I'll be finding that on most of these as we go through them. Uh, let's jump into another small one. Uh, this one is, uh, this one came out recently, kind of got revived, I think. This is the Viper, actually one of their original designs, so I may be incorrect on that. Although they're beginning to market CPMD2. So, uh, nope, not CPM, my bad, Cryo D2, meaning cryo quenched. Uh, that may simply be another way of stating D2. A lot of times these manufacturers will try to get your attention by adding a little something to the name of a steel when it's really the same thing. So we'll call it D2. No real jimping here, more, uh, well, there's jimping, it's more decorative. It's on the sides, uh, very similar to uh, what you see from Dirk Pinkerton. He likes that style of jimping. So once again, as with the Cayman, and uh, we'll put the Cayman back in the picture here, get them all in the shot eventually for comparison. This is uh, a nice little Tonto blade. Got their off red logo there, and you do get a sticker and their catalog with each and um, the catalog will kind of classify each of the knives for you into either everyday carry, tactical hunting, law enforcement, camping, self-defense, survival, or military. And of course you can use them for what you want, but it's a full color catalog of all their current knives nice glossy catalog you don't see that with everybody so there's some nice touches and these aren't really expensive knives probably the most expensive one we're going to get to is right there which is the scorpion but let's get back to the viper so we've got these nasty creatures the viper and the scorpion right viper being a poisonous snake three holes for the clip and they do this quite often isn't that interesting small little short clip but I don't think there's too much chance of it coming off with those three screws in there no blank for this one just the cutout but it makes it very easy in and out of the pocket because of that and uh, these little short clips they got a lot of tension on them a lot of tension with this uh, pattern on the G10, you might feel a little bit of drag, but you're not going to run into any catches from screws or other things that get in your way. Now, you're going to notice on this one, and this one only, as far as I know, we have a very stiff little double lock. So should you want to turn this into a virtual fixed blade, you can if you're concerned about this lock accidentally disengaging and I don't know why you would on this one it's about 50 percent on that liner pretty thick liners someone mentioned they didn't like off-grid because the liners were thin I am really not seeing that compared to just about every other liner lock that I have they're steel liners again D2 blade cool little Tonto uh, about uh, three and a quarter inches yeah slightly shy of three and a quarter inches so a good small pocketable knife again there is a complete review on uh, this little guy should you want to check it out that is the Viper moving on this one I got fairly recently um, and Bob DeMarco has a good selection of these knives along with the fixed blade, a few of the fixed blade off grids. This one's the Enforcer. This is a heavy knife, close to seven ounces. Um, it is weight relieved. And I believe, nope, the Viper is not weight relieved. And the Cayman might be weight relieved. Yeah, yeah, pretty heavily weight relieved along with all the lint in there from testament to the fact that I've 
had that in the pocket quite a bit. Weight relieving on the big guy here. Yep. And this is a special edition called the Red Dawn edition, hearkening to the movie from, uh, what was it, uh, the 90s or earlier? Kurt Russell, I think, it was in that. And they were fighting the Russians on American soil. And they were a small band of rebels. So uh, this is a kind of a swirl red and black G10 that has been heavily textured. I would call it checkered. And that has got a lot of grip to it. We've got a very good run of aggressive jimping, but not too aggressive. It's not cut in too deep. It definitely grabs the thumb. And this is a knife that will give you lots of confidence in its use. Uh, kind of a worn cliff, but with a gradual belly. Steel on this one is 154 cm, so they bumped up the game for this guy. A little over 100, as I recall, on this one. Plenty of handle, and if you don't like the glass breaker, it screws right out. So you can take that out easily. Um, on this one, we do have a blank. No, we don't. Looked like one because it was shiny. That is simply um, cut in with flathead screws. And same thing, of course, on the right side. And got a little more flex to that clip than the short clips because you've got more material to flex for you. And uh, look at the liners. Those are not thin liners. About as thick as any that I've seen. I'm sure there's knives out there with thicker liners. And, of course, there's frame locks if you want to go real thick. This one's got about a 40% lockup and drop shut. About 10 opens and closings on these knives once you get them and they're drop shut. Beautiful action. I think if you really tried, yeah, you can feel it. But they're all on bearings. Beautiful swinging out kind of action. Just about a four inch blade, 154 cm, black stone washed, and a very grippy G10 handle. A rugged knife, <laughs> very, very rugged. These are all meant to be working knives. They're not going to wimp out on you. Let's go to a much newer one. Picked this up just a few weeks ago just came out is the Stinger XL and since it's got the moniker XL we're all wondering if they're probably going to come out with a standard size Stinger as well. Again we have almost a four inch blade call it four inches if you want and Bestech did more of their style of handles on this because they are contoured and we have this beautiful coyote brown tan G10 the other model is blacked out, so all black, same exact thing. Again, they use 154 cm on this one. Yep. And they're calling it crucible. Now, whether that's crucible ingot 154 or CPM 154, I'm not sure when they start using the word crucible. I think somebody checked it out, and it's, uh, it should be regular ingot 154 cm. So the other being CPM 154, which is the crucible powder metallurgy version, a little finer grain than this. Really, really nicely done, almost looks like wood G10. They're using some high quality materials. This is cut in deeply enough to where there is plenty of grip there. And, of course, we've got that bayonet ground blade. Uh, some people mentioned out of my review on this that the grind line on the center is off. My take on it is that's intentional because then you don't thin out the tip. So they're going to give you a little more meat by not dropping that grind down to where the point is overly thin. So again, 
it's equal on both sides. I don't think it was um, just a bad grind. It's definitely intentional because it's about the same height on each side. You may like that, you may not like that. Um, if it was a true double edge blade, I believe that grind line would be just a little higher rather than being asymmetrical. If it bothers you, well, don't get the knife. This is another heavy one coming in around seven ounces and there is weight relieving in it. Yes, there is. So they made their attempt to lighten it would be even heavier without it. But again, a good rugged knife, a little more suited to tactical. And I know that's a ambiguous term. What is tactical? Tactical means uh, putting it to whatever use you need in the field, whether it's uh, utilitarian or self-defense. And I do believe with a blade this wide that that's going to be a useful main grind, which you can actually do some EDC chores with, maybe not as perfectly as a single grind or as a high grind on uh, something like this, which is just a little higher, actually. That's a thing. If you look at these next to each other, you can say, well, you know, they're shortchanging me on the amount of... Uh, of edge that I've got or grind on the edge but if you look at them that way you can see the grind on this one is not that much higher than on the double ground stinger XL all right leaves us to our final knife and this is in their elite their elite level elite series and this one again is Best Tech. They bumped it up. They used to be made by Wii, now made by Best Tech. And they bumped up the steel from S35 VN to M390. And this is a beautiful knife. It is a frame lock, one of their few frame locks. Not quite broken in yet, on bearings. Um, some people were throwing comments in my review of this that they didn't give you the coin uh, that this was fake uh, carbon fiber yada yada but what you've got here is titanium handle this version and there are about four versions has um, forget the version they call it but um, we have um, kind of a gray dark gray anodized titanium stone washed handle and we've got a dark gray main grind to the blade with a polished longitudinal satin on the flat. Kind of a reverse tonto kind of a theme, if you want to call it that, like an Osborne 940. But um, I questioned the company on this after hearing those little complaints. And uh, I guess those were disgruntled uh, people that were kind of following them around and trolling them. Um, first of all, yes, it's real carbon fiber, and it has kind of a nice glow to it. It is not a layered carbon fiber. There would be no need to do that on a knife where you have these uh, insets. So it is simply a very flat, somewhat bead-blasted carbon fiber, solid through and through. And there is no coin that comes with the knives. That was something they were doing for a short run of them. I emailed the company. They got right back to me, and they said everything's straight. And uh, this came from Amazon. And yes, this is a genuine off-grid knife. There's so much suspicion out there today, probably because there's a fair amount of deceit. We'll leave it at that. But um, they went as far as to put the um, insets inlays on both sides a little different on each side again you have the uh, milled in place for the pocket clip and um, milled in on both sides and it is uh, definitely a deep carry and this one is very smooth in and out of the pocket we've got a substantial clip there I believe it's steel no so we got a titanium clip on that one they did go quality through and through. It was about a $210 or $20 knife on Amazon. I think it's about the same if you get it from off-grid. Nice sharp little run of jimping there. Very flat. 
with some beautiful detail, gimped uh, scales or really uh, frame along the back with that almost full backspacer. Action, very nice, almost fu fully fall shut and it makes such a nice clack, kind of a hollow clack when you open it. Great, great action. That's the Scorpion from their Elite Series. So let's lay them all back out here. We've got the Scorpion, we've got the Stinger XL, we've got the Viper, we've got the Enforcer XL, and the original Cayman. Hope you enjoyed this review, folks. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. I'll be back real soon.